tried another thing so that you don't have to, and that thing is keto. Hey everyone! Hello! Welcome back to another mukbang response Hola. video. Ooh! Any what other else? languages? Yeah, yeah. Ciao! That sound very matter of fact. Ciao! So what it got? Very Thai. Mm -hmm. There's an aeroplane flies above here. Mm -hmm. Don't mind the noise. Mukbang, eating show time. Yes! Pause the video. You know what we're gonna say. You know Pause the drill. The but video. maybe some people are new. Oh yeah. And they haven't seen a mukbang before. True. Okay, here's the drill, guys. You gotta pause the video, you gotta go to and get yourself a vegan meal, come back and eat with us. Now we show you what we're eating. I love this meal. This is Luca's little specialty. This is a new thing you've been doing lately. Yeah, I yeah. really like it. So it's sort of like a rice mushroom salad. Mm -hmm. So there's brown rice there. It looks white, but it is brown. Mm -hmm. And we've got mushrooms, two different varieties. We've got snow peas, green beans, red and yellow bell peppers, uh, cucumber, cherry tomatoes. Cu yeah, I've said that. Uh, yeah, that's it actually. And tempeh. Oh, and tempeh, yeah, fermented soybeans. And in there I've got some soy sauce, lime juice, paprika, garlic and herb seasoning, and agave syrup. What was that? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Agave syrup. Put it all together, it's pretty good. I could have called this Luca Nukes the uh, snow peas, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, oh, hardcore. Yeah, they are yeah, so yeah. falling apart. Yeah, no. What is that? I know, I know. What is... Oh, it's uh, you're going to drop it on the keyboard. <laughs> oh, ooh, I did drop it. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. No, no. You know, you're supposed to stagger the veggies, so you put the ones that take longer in first and the ones that take shorter in last. You just put them all in? I just put them all in because I can't be bothered. I just like, get it in, get it done. Anyway. Look, here's the thing, you mush it up when you eat it, when you chew, so... You That's know. one way of looking at it. I'm just trying to make you feel better. Thank you. It's very tasty. Let us know, it is. Good. Let us know what you guys are eating. Put it down in the comments below. Mm. Share your own recipe. Yes, exactly. All right. Mm. I really like this. It's good. Mm. Mm. See, it's kind of like a risotto. Yeah, like an Asian risotto. Yes. Um, and then when you put in the fresh cucumber and tomato, it's like a. It turns it into a bit of a salad, as you said. Mm. It's just a and the bell pepper is nice fresh dish. too. Oh, it is too. Mm. I really like it. Mm. The mushrooms mm. give it a chewy texture, mm -hmm. as does the tempeh. Mm. 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 A few bites, please. I'm hungry. Yeah. Now, last mukbang, everyone was like, Luca eats so fast, you were done in about three minutes. Exaggeration, but I do eat fast. Come on. Are we going to slow down and pace it today? Come on. You see, guys, I'm supposed to say yes here, but I can't control myself. That's just the well, pace at which I eat. I enjoy my food so much. I enjoy it too, but we've got to talk. Right, I'll talk less, and then you can talk more, and that, that way you'll pace it out. Yeah, hopefully that'll work. Okay. Go on, start. Well. <laughs> First thing we wanted to do was bring people's attention to a video mm. that they may or may not have yet seen. Mm -hmm. mm. It was our yeah. last uploaded video. Yes, so which was a great debate. It was. It's not really so, a debate. No, well, it was a well. It was. It, was it is a debate. Of, you know, yeah. When it comes to killing animals, there is no debate. But yeah, I know what you mean. That's an interesting word. Yeah. Yeah. Discussion. Uh, but living in a society where it's <laughs> normal to kill animals we're for so food, so overanalyzing it's, this. It's, you know, you could call it a debate, yeah? yeah. Even mm -hmm. though there is obviously no debate. But. Mm -hmm. Anyway, our recent uh, video is an outreach session that I did in Edinburgh, Scotland. Yeah. Um, so this was like a couple of weeks ago. We were on our UK activism tour. And yeah, we're in Edinburgh and we're doing um, some outreach. And it was amazing because obviously we're from Australia. There was an Australian beef farmer there. Would you believe? That was pretty... Like, yeah. wow, coincidence? There was. Although there were no coincidences. No. As you said in the conversation with him, he had been, he yeah. basically he drew this conversation yeah, to him and he kind he, of manifested. He He'd been wanting to, to have speak it. to an yeah. activist. So I'm like, here I am. Mm. Um, yeah, so he was hanging around the cube and then, you know, one of the other activists called me over and, and said, you know, this 
farmer from Australia wants to speak to someone, I'm like, yes, finally got to outreach a farmer. I've always wanted to have this kind of conversation. You have. Um, and he'd always wanted to have a conversation with an activist, so it was a match made in heaven. That's it. And uh, it went really, really well. It As I was filming well. it, I'm like, wow, the guys on YouTube are going to love mm -hmm. watching this one. And sure enough, the comments have been... Mm -hmm amazing haven't they like people have really they have. got a lot out of it it's very educational yeah i think it's very good for people to for vegans to learn how to have these conversations how to um you know answer these mm. these excuses, excuses objections. And just anything that someone's going to throw up uh, throw up to you <laughs> throw at you yeah um you know it's a great example just to watch and learn a little bit more and what we really want the reason why we're plugging this is because what we want is to get the attention of farmers, specifically in Australia. We want mm. them to see this conversation, to start thinking twice about what they're doing for a living and what they're contributing to. Yeah. And the way we're gonna do that is by sharing the heck out of this video. That's Get right. the views nice and high, share it. So that the algorithm favors it, so mm. that it increases its chances of reaching farmers. Yes, and we've had a lot of luck reaching farmers on Facebook specifically. So please mm. take the video and uh, you know, upload parts of it or even share our Facebook promo for it on our Facebook page, yeah. that vegan couple. Yeah, it's a minute that's subtitled, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Which is so quite powerful. That's what we want. We want to get the attention of the farmers. Mm. So go and check that video out. Obviously, I'll link it down below. And uh, thanks for all the great comments and support on that video. I know yes, a lot of guys. people really loved it, really found it helpful. So thank you very we much. We appreciate every single one of them. Mm. So, moving on to the topic of today's video, mm. deja vu two weeks in a row. I know. The reason we say that is because last week we made a mukbang eating show video and it was also a response video to another YouTuber, Sarah Therese. Mm -hmm. And that was a very well received video as well. Yeah. Uh, we'll link that down below in case you haven't seen it. Definitely check it out. So anyway, why we said deja vu is because we'd made a response video to Sarah Therese over two years ago mm basically addressing exactly the same things that she just raised yet again two years later in a recent video. Anyway, we, this week we've had uh, requests to do a response video to Gabby Hanna from a YouTube channel formerly called The Gabby Show and she's put out a video about uh, trying a ketogenic diet and <laughs> Well, we made a response video to Gabby over two years ago, around the same time as Sarah Therese. Yeah. And uh, like, also it, it was a diet response video, wasn't it? Mm, she was mm -hmm. complaining about her diet and her weight and what have you. Mm -hmm. And it's all happening again. Here we are again. Here we are again. I'm just, it's like, ah. Oh. I feel like we could just, so you know how good that was? You just spoke for like two minutes. Shoved my food in. That was awesome. That's how I normally finish Get my going. food faster than you because <laughs> yeah, I was Come really fast. What I feel like doing is just sitting here, chilling, eating our lunch, whilst we just play our previous video from two years ago for all of these. That's what we wanted to do with Sarah Therese as well, you know? It'd be really relaxing. So. But we're not going to do that. We're going to talk to you. Huh. We're not. All right. So, so Gabby's so, video was titled... Oh, I have to pull it up. Hold on. Oops. I'm usually much more organized. Which one is that? That one there. This one. Okay. Not that one there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. Yeah, this one. Cool. Thank you, sorry. I tried the keto diet so you don't have to. Okay. So All right. For anyone who doesn't who hasn't heard of a keto diet, been living under a rock somewhere, mm. keto is short for ketogenic. Uh, it's basically a very low carb, high fat, high protein, animal products based diet. Mm -hmm. Where, no. yeah. I will just jump in and say, yes, you can do the keto diet in the vegan version, mm. um, but it's still the same principle where it's low carb, high fat, high protein. Yes. We don't endorse the ketogenic diet at all, be it the animal products version or the vegan version. So, Gabby, uh, what she does but is... If you she, want to do it, at least do it vegan. Uh, that's it. That mm. way you're only hurting yourself, um, not other animals. So what Gabby does is she'll like do these experiments where she tries something for a week and vlogs. A lot of channels do, you know, do these kind of things. Yeah. They usually, well not usually, but a lot of them do it with, you know, I tried to be vegan for a week and they're always <laughs> disastrous. Usually, usually disastrous. Several response videos mm. to videos like that, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, we'll link our response video playlist in the description below this video. Lots of good There's stuff There's a there. plethora there. Mm. Anyhow, Gabby tried out the ketogenic diet. And it was interesting because as we were watching it, I was really pleased with it the majority of the time. Because... She had such a miserable time trying out this diet mm -hmm. that 
she gave it the worst rap ever, ultimately, uh, to her subscribers. Which was fantastic, because obviously we don't want people doing that. And, no. and she hated it. It was, it was very... Um, I felt sorry for her, but hey, she was putting herself through this. It was loathsome. It was torture. She it was hated awful it. to watch. And I felt sweaty. Oh, we, we were yeah. putting ourselves in her position, mm. thinking, oh my god, can mm. you imagine subjecting yourself to that needlessly? Awful. So I just want to summarize. This is how bad it was. This is the list of complaints or things that she experienced. So she was dizzy, had low energy, felt weak, her body hurt, she couldn't sleep. It, she'd wake up early. She had migraines, nausea, she was extremely hungry, hot sweats, intense stomach pains, upset stomach, going to the toilet a lot, heart palpitations, reflux, vomited in her mouth at the gym and ended the experiment early. At that point when she was at the gym and had the heart palpitations, this was on uh, day five? She felt like she was going into cardiac oh, arrest. Oh no! And That's awful! And then yeah, she was. I think she was doing ab exercises and... It came up, it was in her mouth, and she's like, ah, what did she say? She tapped out. Mm, I yeah. mean, I would too at that point. That yeah. is just, that is brutal. And no wonder she felt like she was going into cardiac arrest, because the science has shown that a low-carb diet actually impedes arterial function. That is, it reduces the flow of blood through the coronary artery, the main artery leading to the heart. So it's actually proven by science what mm. she was experiencing. I just feel all stressed out just thinking about going mm. through that, like, yuck. Mm. So the whole time, she was, as we've read out, but I just want to reiterate, mm. she was very hungry. She was always thinking about food. And there's a clip at one point where she says, um, mm. she was so hungry that she went home, she opened the fridge, she's sitting on the floor and just shoving food mm -hmm. in. Sitting there like a little, you know, yeah. crazy person on the floor, you yeah. know, trying to get more calories in. And she felt irritable and yes. hangry, didn't yes. she? Yes. So it was affecting her mood and emotions. Awful, of course. I mean, you know what it's like. I mean, you know how much we eat. And when we are hangry, we're just devils. Devils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't happen often because we typically ensure that our portion mm. sizes are huge such that they sustain us between meals and we don't get hangry. But you know, sometimes you're out and about and a meal might be delayed for whatever reason. Hangriness sets in. Bad. <laughs> it's normally when, when we're in the supermarket, isn't it? Trying to uh, mm. acquire food for our next meal. Mm -hmm. That's why they say you should never go shopping when you're hungry. Mm. You just... <laughs> anyway, so the poor thing endured five days of just hell and mm. physical discomfort. I mean, she had a lot of pain in her stomach and yeah. nauseous, awful. So I mean, she was saying, you know, it's really My strange mm, to feel nauseous, but at the same time be hungry, but you can't look at food because it's just like, oh, I don't want fatty stuff anymore. So yuck, yuck, yuck. Can I just say, mm. it also got me thinking, you might wait for that point. Mm. I couldn't help but think as I'm watching Gabby's video, about how none of what she reported we ever experience eating the way that we eat. Uh, you know, let me just have a look at this list. Dizzy, no. Low energy, no. Weak, no. Body hurt, no. Couldn't sleep. We sleep like babies. We're asleep within five minutes of our heads hitting the pillow and we can sleep solid for, you know, seven, eight hours, no problem. Migraine, I've never had one. Uh, nausea, never. Extremely hungry, no, again, eating big portions so that we're sustained between meals. Hot sweats, no, in fact, I've uh, cured my hyperhidrosis mm. that I used to have by eating this way, which is a predominantly whole foods plant-based diet. Intense stomach pains, no. Upset stomach, going to the toilet a lot. Upset we stomach, no, going to the toilet, yes. That's because of fiber, that's good. That's right, you know. high fiber diet. Mm. Heart palpitations, no. When we used to drink caffeine, 10 years ago, mm. yes, and I remember one time, I'm thinking at... Uh, oh, in Queensland? Yeah, in mm. on Hamilton Island, at the buffet. Yes. Yeah, you want to tell that little story briefly? <laughs> this is embarrassing. Well, no, okay, this is what happened. Yeah. So we were on holiday, we were on vacation, this was, yeah, as like I said, 10 plus years ago, and it was a buffet, and I ate so much that morning. Mm. I remember I had, was it Eggs Benedict or Eggs Florentine? What's the difference? And then, what did I have? I had pancakes after that, stack of pancakes. 
this was with um, I think coffee or hot chocolate I can't remember what I was having and then I had like uh, sweets danishes pastries mm -hmm. and then I had fruit I think it was just like three or four meals rolled into one mm. it was disgusting and you might be thinking and the pastries sweet and the um, pancakes sweet Yes, but a lot of these things are like donuts, where the fat mm. content is just as high, particularly if they're using a and, lot of oils. Well, of course, and they're not vegan, so they would have been using dairy that's right. and milk and maybe eggs. Maybe eggs, yeah. That's so high fat. It's not, you know, a high carb dessert. Mm. Especially the eggs Benedict or Glorantine, yeah, exactly. whatever it was. And I was just, I was up to here with food really bad, and I was kind of like breathing really heavy. And I went back to the room. I said, "Look, I don't feel well." And I remember I started getting sweaty and then my heart started palpitating and I didn't know what to do because my stomach was killing me. Yeah. I said, look, I kind of want to throw this food up because I've just got too much in me. And I'm like, I've never forced myself to throw up. I don't want to do this, but it wasn't kind of coming out either end. You know, I just wanted it out of my body. And uh, I was, I mean, you were laughing at me. like. Yeah, it wasn't good. Like when we think <laughs> back now, yeah, that was... Um... What was it called? Was hypertension. It like, I reckon it was hypertension. Yeah, yeah. That was that's our thoughts. Yeah, because you were carrying a lot more weight back then. Mm, um, yeah, and the heart palpitations and the sweats scared me. Mm, it scared me. Mm. I was just I couldn't lay down. I couldn't do anything. I was just like disgustingly full. Yeah. And you were only twenty seven at the time. Mm, really bad. Yeah. So that's the closest I think I can relate to Gabby's experience. Mm. It's not pleasant. So. We thought it was absolutely fantastic, as we said, that she reviewed this diet in this way and was very honest about how torturous it was and really, I hope, put people off trying this. What I don't like is that she tried it in the first place because, of course, it involves a lot of animal products. That's right. So, of course, when we consume animals, we're killing products of enslavement, confinement, torture, mutilation, and ultimately needless killing. Yeah. And that goes for all animal products, including eggs and dairy, all of which we explained to Gabby and her viewers over two years ago in our original response video, didn't exactly. we? So the point is that Gabby is aware that animals are needlessly killed and yet has continued to do so, unfortunately, mm. for those animals for the two years since. Yeah, so basically... And is still promoting those products to a huge audience. I know. Six, she's over got, six million I think, subscribers. Uh, where are we? Yeah, almost six six point three. Mm. So it's a lot of people watching this. A lot so, of influence. Oh, huge! And absolutely. Um, so she, she gets to day five, and then she stops. She's mm. like, I can't do this for the rest of the week. Taps out. Good. So on the keto experiment, she ate a lot of white meat, uh, chicken, and I think some turkey. She had a lot of eggs and a lot of green vegetables, like spinach, for example, that is very low carb. Um, and bacon. And bacon. Mm -hmm. Uh, and avocados so interestingly her breakfast was the same on the keto diet as was as what she usually has in her regular diet mm. because well I'll, I'll just show you my daily breakfast what I eat anyways is apparently keto I have two pieces of bacon half an avocado and two eggs and that breakfast is great for me I love it it's when I look my best I feel my best it's when I'm eating that breakfast consistently every day and it tastes so yummy so it's an ethical abomination it's heart attack and cancer forming and it is environmentally destructive that's what's on that plate there yeah. apart from the avocado so it's very important that we understand that health and we've said this for so many years health happens on the inside it's not what we look like on the outside it's we what can... our arteries look like and the flow of blood through those arteries mm -hmm. that are either going to cause our leading cause of death heart disease or not yeah so you can lose weight on any diet you can look look good on any diet physically you know you can achieve incredible things with calorie restriction, with over-exercise, with many different ways. But that doesn't mean that you're healthy. Now... Look at Bob Harper. Yeah, remember? Formerly one of the fittest men in the United States, mm -hmm. former trainer of uh, Biggest Loser. Mm. He had a heart attack, made some response videos, we'll link those below. Mm -hmm. He looked great on the outside. Mm -hmm. Bob had a six-pack. Mm -hmm. Bob also had a heart attack. So it's what's going on inside. And this is what we were talking to Gabby about in our previous video two years ago. We were explaining 
the science behind eating a whole foods plant-based diet, why that's so important. And after that video, oh, we will just mention, she did watch our previous video and uh, she left a great comment. Thank you too for being a positive force in the vegan community. I'm sure many people, self-included, respond to this type of message way more than a bashing slash exposed type video. I'll be in touch soon. Thank you for being kind and concerned for the planet, but also for other human beings and their emotions. So it was a really, really positive, good. because it was a positive, helpful, mm -hmm. educational video. Mm -hmm. uh, we, Full of science. Yeah, we responded, hey Gabby, you're very welcome, and we're so happy you watched this. Yes, please get in touch whenever you're ready. Thank you for keeping an open mind and heart. So, after that, I can't remember what, how exactly it happened, but... I think we exchanged some we, emails, actually. We did exchange. I can't remember who reached out first. Maybe we reached out. I don't know. Anyway, um, we exchanged emails with Gabby, and what we did is we sent her a copy of our Health and Lifestyle Guide ebook. Um, now, obviously, that's something that we you know, sell through our website. Just pausing the video here, guys. We wanted to record this note and add it in because we forgot to mention it. That if you're interested in our Health and Lifestyle Guide ebook, you can get it at a discounted price. Just go to our website, thatveganCouple.com, subscribe to our website for free, and you'll be sent an exclusive discount for our Health and Lifestyle Guide ebook. And keep in mind that the guide also includes a copy of our recipes ebook too, so it's really good value, especially with a discount. If the subscribe option doesn't automatically pop up when you go to our website, just hit the free gifts button in the menu and you can subscribe from that page. And we'll also send you a heap of other free gifts, like a shopping guide video showing you how we eat a healthy, cheap and sustainable vegan diet and delicious recipe plus a guided yoga class video. So we'll link everything in the description below. All right, back to the mukbang. But we felt like we needed to send it to her because if she were to adopt the principles in that guide, apply them to her lifestyle, and then communicate those with her huge audience of many millions of people, wow. that the potential to save a lot of animals' lives and improve people's health, and obviously the state of the environment, it was huge, it was well worth. Mm, it was well know. worth just giving it to her, so. Now the only thing is, Sometimes when you give someone something, they don't value it as much as if they purchase it. Yeah. That's just the way human psychology works sometimes. So we're not sure whether she didn't uh, take on board you know, the principles in the guide and apply them to her lifestyle because she felt like it was just, you know, she didn't value it because she didn't pay for it, we just gave it to her, or whether she wanted to, well, well maybe she felt like, hey, this could actually help me. Mm. And if it does, because some people, Gabby's mm. had a history, hasn't she, with mm. food and emotions and... Yeah, well, a lot of people do, and we become very attached to that... to the drama in our lives, yeah. you know? And, 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 if we're, and if we're to fix that drama all mm. of a sudden, then we wouldn't have any drama, so sort of what would we what complain would we about? Yeah. What, you, know. you know? Read The Power of Now. This is, this is great stuff in The Power of Now. It's, you know, look up what the pain body is about. This mm. ex When we read that 10 years ago, mm. it explained so much about our lives and our behavior, yeah. and we found it so helpful. And then once we understood it, we could recognize when we were doing the things that The Power of Now was talking about. And we're like, no, yeah. stop that. Yeah. If you don't want that in your life, then change it and yeah. be serious about changing it. So in all fairness, mm -hmm. I do feel mm -hmm. like Gabby read it. I do feel like she's taken on some of the principles in the book. <laughs> what are you looking at? You think so? Because I remember well, because, um, because, sometime because, after mm. she was, you know, having cheese pizzas. And yeah, not immediately. Yeah, I know. But long term, like right now, mm -hmm. for example, in this video, she is stressing how much she loves carbs. Mm. And she's saying you need carbs and carbs are your energy. She was saying a lot of the stuff that we were saying in our That's video true. and in our guidebook. That's true. Which so is she, backed by science, not our opinion. Mm, so she is absolutely endorsing a diet that includes carbohydrates and that's fantastic carbohydrates that from whole really plant good. foods yeah yes so she re repeatedly refers to sweet potatoes in particular exactly yeah and which she are probably also enjoys the best fruit. source yeah those two yeah. sweet potatoes and fruit mm. would have to be amongst the oh and the beans yeah those three would have to be amongst some of the healthiest uh, carbohydrate calories on the planet yeah so i do feel like she did take on some of what we were talking about right i'll give her that but we also but. had links to all of the documentaries that dealt with the ethical, environmental, mm -hmm. and health aspects of eating a vegan diet as well. Yeah. And mm. those seem to have, mm. you know, not been absorbed or not been watched. Mm. Because what she did 
um, I guess more recently is she has changed her diet. She's cut out, you know, processed like junk food and um, she is eating more carbs. So she loves her sweet potato. She enjoys fruit, but she's still eating white meat like chicken and turkey and she bacon. is eating bacon and she is eggs. eating eggs. Exactly. So there's still a lot of very unhealthy food, food mm. violence on her plate. Yeah. Anyone still eating bacon or any other processed meat in 2018 must have missed the memo from the World Health Organization, I think from 2016 or thereabouts, mm. classifying uh, processed meat as a group one carcinogen in the same group as tobacco and asbestos. So this stuff actually causes cancer. That was the WHO's conclusion. So we shouldn't be eating cancer, known cancer-causing foods. Mm. Uh, and then in terms of the eggs... Oh, well, no, no. Here's what she said towards the end of her keto experiment video. Yes, I saw results. They were nice. Yes, I lost weight, but I couldn't even fully work out. For me, I would rather kill it in the gym and have a balanced, healthy diet than do something like this. So kill it in the gym and have a fully balanced, healthy, healthy diet. Healthy, balanced diet. Yeah. Healthy, balanced diet. You don't have a healthy, balanced diet. That's the thing, Gabby. Um, look, like we said in the previous video, you don't need to kill it in the gym to lose weight and to be, you know, um, feeling healthy in your body. I'll give you an uh, example. Not by a long shot. Not at all. Natasha's BMI is currently 18.7 and mine is 20.2. Both of those BMIs are towards the lower end of the normal range. Now, they've been achieved through basically what's uh, this fork, you know? Mm -hmm. That's where we determine our BMIs primarily, first and foremost. It's, we've always said it's about 80% diet, 20% exercise. So we base our diet around predominantly whole plant foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and some nuts and seeds. Now in terms of exercise, we've only exercised on average this year around once every two and a half days. And a third of that exercise, in fact, over a third of it has simply been walking. Hmm. And I just want to say... <laughs> Think about that. That's not killing it in the, in the gym. I just want to say, also, you might say I'm like, um, what did you say, every two and a bit days? On average, On every average. two and a half days. Okay, but that is not like spread out evenly. For example... That's an average. Yeah, when we were in the US doing our activism tour, that was three months, no exercise. In the UK, on our activism tour, that was five weeks, no exercise. So you're looking at just over four months this year of nothing, and, nothing, nothing. And our BMIs wow. didn't change at all. Our body composition changed, sure. We lost muscle mass and gained fat, mm -hmm. but our actual um, weight and I thus mean, BMI say, didn't change. Let me say fat. I mean... We lost because of the... A little more on the tummy. Yeah, but, the, the muscle loss was replaced mm. with fat gain. Mm -hmm. um, and don't forget, we, we also lost tone. Had, we had a lot more, um, not a lot more, but we definitely had more processed foods because we were eating out more often. You know, yeah. we weren't in control of our meals three times a day the way we are at home normally. Mm -hmm. So our diet changed, our sleep changed. That's going to affect your uh, your weight as well and how you're feeling. We there had a lot more so many other late things. nights and early mornings. Yes, late meals, eating late at night as well. Mm -hmm. So lots of things changed in our lives, but our weight didn't change. It was very interesting yeah. to have that little experiment Absolutely. this year. So, and again, and when we ate out, we would always try, by and large, the majority of the time, to choose mm. the healthiest options from the menu. Mm -hmm. So we would avoid the deep fried junk, and we would try to base it around something more wholesome, like a, mm. a build your own bowl, for example, or a vegan burrito with beans and rice and veg and that type of thing. Yeah. So. And yes, yeah, sometimes I would have like, you know, vegan cheese, for example, mm. or a vegan meat. And that was also, I wanted to do that to show people that you've got that option. That's right. That's very important for people transitioning to vegan diet. Yeah. You know, they want to eat the same things that they're currently eating in the plant-based version. That's so right. that's good to promote that. That's right. So we had burgers. Yeah. Pizzas. Uh -huh. Burritos. Mm. Um, sandwiches. Lots of things. Yeah. Lots of things. Mm. Yeah. So... I've lost my track of thought. Where are we at? Basically, what we're saying is we don't have to kill it in the mm, gym. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not at all. Nothing. We're living proof of that. In fact, it was so funny. Oh, I've had two comments recently that I can just remember now. Our last video, someone said, oh, all I'm concentrating on is Natasha's guns. I haven't been working out. I've just started now, like, the last week. 
I think I've gone to the gym three times. Three times. And you haven't, when you say go to the gym, no. a couple of dumbbell exercises no. for like, what, 45 minutes total? Compared between... to what I used to do, oh my gosh, nothing. The reason you're seeing muscle is because I'm lean and that's because of my diet. Another person said yesterday on our Instagram stories, I, we were at the dentist and I was laying in the chair. Oh, and yeah. Luca was filming me and someone um, sent us a message saying, oh, you know, I love how lean your legs are or, or you know, you, you look so fit. I love your legs in the dentist chair. And I said, I'm not fit. I haven't done anything this year. I'm far from fit. Yeah. But I look lean because of what I'm eating. Yeah. My, I didn't gain weight on my legs. You still see definition because of my food, not the exercise. Exactly. See the difference? Yeah. And we will show you uh, Natasha at her fittest, uh, yeah. which was earlier at the beginning of this year, yeah. uh, before the uh, overseas international vegan activism tours. And that was when we were exercising regularly. Mm. But, that was like at my peak fitness. Yeah. And at that, but I we're mean, talking like January. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't use it, you lose it. Like anything. Exactly. But the point is, we haven't blown out. Mm -mm. Look at the portion sizes that we're still eating. And we don't just do this for camera. It's not just in the mukbangs. You know, everybody... You can follow us on Instagram. Yeah. We post most of our meals on Instagram. But also everybody that we stayed with when we've been traveling mm. this year, everyone's like... Wow, you really do eat that much in real life. We're like, yep, do you have a bigger bowl? <laughs> you know, people yeah. don't really. People can, take our it. hosts can vouch for that. Mm -hmm. The people who came to our workshop and saw a seat can vouch for that. People who follow us on Instagram stories, as I said. Now, this is daily, so you can eat abundantly. You don't have to kill yourself in the gym, and you can still get great results when you focus the majority of your calories consistently on whole plant food. Eating this way, science is telling us that we have the lowest risk of any diet group of developing our leading causes of death. So, and we're not killing animals, you know, most importantly, mm. and we're being as least destructive to the environment as we can when it comes to diet. So, yeah. so it's, it's just win, 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 and it's effortless. I know. That's the other thing, you know, how many people spend mm. so much money on diet programs, diet shakes, diet pills. They get on the diet merry-go-round where they calorie mm. restrict, lose weight, then they have cravings, so then they binge and they regain the weight and, and some, and then they do it all over again. You know, that diet merry-go-round, the diet yo-yo. It's awful. It, it's awful, and it doesn't need to be, because this is effortless. We eat as much as we care for mm. of predominantly whole plant foods every single day, what yeah. we love to eat, yeah. as much of it as we care for. Yeah. And we've got BMIs at the lower end of the normal range effortlessly well, you know, with little it's, exercise. It's so interesting. The two main comments that we've received over the years Specifically the last, I don't know, say two years? Yeah, because we've been eating been... this particular way. We've been eating a vegan diet for just over seven years now. Mm -hmm. But eating predominantly whole plant foods three years now. Mm -hmm. How do you eat so much and why are you so skinny? It's the food. Been saying it for years. Yeah. Now, now, also, oh, go on, now, please. No, no. I was just going to, I was going to say, there is more to it in terms of its lifestyle as well. Mm. And again, this is why we wrote a health and lifestyle guide ebook. This is why we do this. This is what we sent to Gabby. It's about, um, you know, how much sleep you get, how late are you eating, just a, so many other things that you need to take into consideration. So we're not saying that it's just, you know, don't don't go and misquote us, everyone. It's not just the food. It's predominantly the food, but there are other things that you food. have to factor in, of course. So I just want to put that little disclaimer yeah. out. So and anyway, that's what Gabby has. That's yeah. what she, you know, had two years ago sent her. And I was also going to say, mm. just in case anyone was watching this, going, "Oh, well, then how could I gain weight if I needed to gain weight?" Let's say I was into bodybuilding, for mm -hmm. example. You just have to eat more calories and lift heavy. It's as simple as that. And also, you change can your macros. You change your macros. Mm. So, for example, we eat probably a eighty percent carbohydrate, ten percent fat, ten percent protein diet. But if you're a bodybuilder, you might want to look at 60% carbohydrate, 20% fat, 20% protein, for example. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to eat such big volumes in order to get the same number of calories because you're yeah. just tweaking the macros. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do yeah. it. All right, so back to Gabby and her eggs and bacon for breakfast. Yeah. Um, so just... <sighs> let's see what the science right. has to say. Yeah, let's do that. So consuming the amount of cholesterol found in just a single 
Agade, appears to cut a woman's life short as much as smoking five cigarettes a day for 15 years. The most protective behavior they found was fiber consumption. Eating just a cup of oatmeal worth of fiber a day appears to extend a woman's life as much as four hours of jogging a week. So there you go. So that was one of the largest and most comprehensive nutritional studies undertaken and it was a competing risks analysis. So they were actually able to compare risks like smoking and egg consumption for example. And that's how they came up with that and so we'll link the full video down below so that you can look at the science and the studies uh, to research it yourself. But there you go. There you go. And on, and the other, on the flip side with the fiber. Yeah, so that's so interesting. So our breakfast every single morning for years now is a big bowl of oatmeal with plenty of fruit, uh, some chopped walnuts, uh, maybe a bit of peanut butter, we enjoy that, a sprinkle of cinnamon of course. Right, so four hours of jogging or a bowl of oatmeal. Do a bit of both, why not? But if you don't jog or you can't jog or you don't want to jog, eat the oatmeal. Yeah. Beautiful. And you know how you were talking about, we were on tour for three months mm -hmm. in the US and five weeks in the UK and Ireland, and we ate out uh, during that time a lot more, a lot, lot more than we ordinarily would in our everyday lives. Mm. One thing we kept consistent was mm. our breakfast, wasn't it? We would have- Everywhere we went. Everywhere we went, oatmeal and fruit with some chopped walnuts for breakfast yep. every morning. And We'd I take it on the plane with us. Yep. We always travel with our Tupperware containers. Yep. So on we the make buses, sure on the, trains. the very first meal, the first way we start the day is we're in control. We're gonna have that oatmeal, we're gonna have that fruit. And that's Beautiful. why we didn't need the jog. There you go. Ah, see. Beautiful slow release of energy. You know, no dips and yeah, sustained between meals. Yeah. So um, oatmeal is is king. Oh, it <laughs> oatmeal is, the is king. game changer, people. <laughs> the game changer. So comparing that to starting with eggs and bacon, oh my mm. gosh, Gabby, it's dangerous for your body. It's terribly dangerous for your body. And in fact, not only is it the cholesterol and saturated fat that increase one's risk of developing heart disease, our leading cause of death, but also the choline and methionine content of eggs mm. is cancer promoting. Uh, and also animal protein in general mm. elevates the body's IGF-1 levels, which proliferate cancer cell growth. So we're gonna link some uh, studies and videos for you to learn more about that in the description below. It's not good, and I just want to reiterate from the um, ethical perspective Please. here. So the egg the industry, most important. of course, the egg industry is so incredibly cruel. That's why we're not vegetarian. We don't consume eggs and dairy because they're actually crueler than meat industry, and that's because the suffering is prolonged. Uh, Meaning that all egg-laying hens are ultimately slaughtered for their flesh anyway. Yes, so but the, they have to lay all these eggs for like... 18 mm, to eighteen months years. to 24 months. Yeah. Right, um, and now the babies, as when, they're, when they've hatched, the babies are sorted male and female. The females go into the egg-laying industry, but the baby male chicks, of course, they don't lay eggs and they're not uh, the right breed for meat. They won't grow big enough, fast enough. So what are they going to do with the baby males? Well, they're useless to the egg industry. They're not profitable. They literally throw them into a industrial macerator. They or, grind them up alive. Yeah. Or they suffocate them alive in bags, yeah. plastic bags, or they gas them. Incredibly cruel. So every time we buy eggs, and I noticed that she And that's had... the same for all egg production systems, yes. organic, cage-free, free range. Well, I was going to say, I noticed in her video, she bought cage-free, cage -free, I think yeah. it was. Doesn't matter, Doesn't that's matter. just one big shed with like 20,000 birds. Yeah. They still can't move properly. The same the process. The process is exactly the same and they're all slaughtered for the meat. So incredibly cruel. So we don't want to put that on our plates. We don't want to support that industry. And we certainly don't want to put that into our bodies. Not to mention the de-beaking of the hens. Oh, yes. So that they don't peck each other with their natural pecking order Awful. and the stressed conditions. That would be like us having our fingers, the tips of our fingers chopped off. Yeah. You know, that's where we have all the sensitivity with and contact with the world. Well, that's what a beak is to a chicken. Very, very cruel. So that's breakfast. Um, all right, well, let's have a look. Except the pigs as well. Oh, the pigs. Oh my gosh. You know, oh, Gabby. These are, these are the they suffer so much. You know, we've been to so many slaughterhouses this year, um, joining the Save Movement vigils. We watch the animals come in on the trucks. They are in awful condition. And even if they were in perfect condition, they're still going to the same place. They're going to a slaughterhouse. They're going to have their throat slit. They're going to bleed out. And the most humane way of killing them, of rendering them unconscious, is to put them in a gas chamber. 
This is horrific. It's so disgustingly cruel and painful. If you see the footage, which we'll link oh. below, they thrash violently mm. in the gondola when they're lowered into the gas chamber. It's awful. Oh, it is, it's horrific. And the sounds. The sound is probably the worst thing I've ever heard. It's really yuck. So there's nothing kind about this and there's certainly nothing healthy about this. I. I mean, look, we used to start our day that way as well. I understand. Bacon, eggs, sausages, yeah, it lot. tastes good. We get it. We've been there. We but used once to eat we that. know better, we have a we moral obligation better. to do better. And Gabby, you have known better for over two years exactly. now. And I tell you what, you're going to feel a hell of a lot better starting on oatmeal and fruit oh. than you are with that, you know, low carb. I mean, it's a virtually no carb breakfast. Avocado has a bit of carbs, of course, yeah. but it's low. So, all right, let's move on to what, when she broke the keto experiment um, on day five, that was the breakfast that she had, obviously the same as what she always has. Let's listen to what she had for lunch. This is my lunch and I'm very happy. I just had all those blueberries and now I'm having a salad with chicken, green beans and black beans. You can't see it because I mixed it all up, but I'm very excited for the black beans because they're 20 grams of carbs and the green beans are very carby. It already feels so much better after eating that carton of blueberries. Okay, so she's having, I mean, to me that's still quite a low carb lunch. Well, just, I mean, there's carbs in everything but the chicken. Yeah, but um, still, that, a lot of it was Depends what uh, ratio of chicken to yeah. uh, beans that she had. Well, that will ultimately determine look, how, but the point put is- Put your rice in the salad. Yeah. That's really gonna carb it up. You, you are right though, because no matter how uh, lean the cut of chicken is, it's still higher in fat mm. than the majority of whole plant foods, that's for sure. Hence, it's going to tend towards the higher protein, higher fat uh, content. And I just found it so strange that basically she had this um, you know, chicken for the five days and she was feeling so grossed mm. out about mm. all this fat. Mm. And so why did she have chicken on the day that she yeah. broke? Why not have extra sweet potatoes? Well, there were or, no sweet potatoes oh, no, in that one. Won't. There was just two types of beans, mm. but she could have switched the chicken for anything. Sweet potato, as you said, white potato, yeah. uh, tempeh, rice, soybeans, quinoa, anything. Anything, yeah. But Pumpkin. Why would you have chicken again? All right, so again, it's not healthy. Let's listen to the science. Well, we know from the largest forward-looking study on diet and cancer ever performed by humanity, the incidence of all cancers combined lower among vegetarians than meat eaters, um, especially some of the fastest growing tumors like lymphomas and uh, leukemias. And for that, the worst meat was actually poultry chicken, up to triple the rates for every 50 grams of poultry consumption. A quarter of a chicken breast, triple your risk. A quarter of a chicken breast, tripling your risk of developing lymphoma, one of the most aggressive and destructive cancers. I mean, I can't ever imagine <sighs> knowingly God. consuming something that is going to triple my risk of developing what would be an agonizing way to die and Why would, would be heartbreaking for family and friends to have to watch as well. Far from healthy. Especially when it's needless. <clears throat> brings to mind uh, the formerly longest lived population were the Okinawans and they did you know 85% of their calories came from carbohydrates mm. and 69% of their total calories came from sweet potatoes so we should have no fear of whole food carbohydrates whatsoever in fact that's what promotes longevity all right what did you have for dinner I'm gonna eat dinner. I have chicken and spinach, chicken breasts, not thighs, and a sweet potato. Okay, so great for the sweet potato. Sweet potatoes are back, but chicken breast instead of thighs. Now she was having chicken thighs because they're high in fat. That's when she was doing the keto experiment. And then she went back to chicken breast because it's lower in fat. But it still contains all the bad stuff. Even if it's lower in fat, it still contains all those things that Artery are... Artery clogging, cholesterol and saturated fat, animal protein that's linked to cancer promotion. No, it's not. It's not a health food. And also, I noticed there's a lot of green, which is really good. Spinach, excellent. Lettuce, good. Great. But not a whole lot of variety in terms of vegetables and not a whole lot of variety at all. Like, I know this is just one one meal, one sample, but if this is what she usually eats, um, you need more color on your plate, Gabby, with different kinds of vegetables, eggplant, zucchini, uh, bell peppers. Whichever ones you like. Whatever. There's, so, you know, there's a, thousands a out there, whatever, you, whatever appeals to you. Yeah, yeah, some nuts and seeds, some, again, walnuts on your breakfast are so delicious. 
whole plant foods really contain all of the That's right, they do. F essential fats that we need. Yeah, because all whole plant foods are made up of carbohydrates, protein and fat. So, oh, that's right. At one point, I think it was, I don't know if it was this video or another one that she made, I was kind of flicking through, but at one point, I'm pretty sure she was cooking bacon and she said that fat is important. And we're like, yeah, fat's important, but not fat from bacon. That's the wrong fat. You know, that's that's not the fat that you want in your body. Yeah, the fat from whole plant foods is yeah. sufficient. Yeah. So... It doesn't have the same associated risk Eesh. of developing our leading causes of death like heart disease, type 2 diabetes and some forms of cancer yeah. as the animal-based fat does. All right. I think we got to the end of it. I think we got to the end of it. So, all up, I'm very grateful that she gave the keto diet a very, very bad rap. And yes. I hope nobody tries it after this. Yeah. Again, if you are going to, make sure that it's vegan so that innocent beings don't have to suffer yeah. needlessly. And um, I guess finally, I hope Gabby's watching this, maybe, maybe not. Um, it would be great if you just dropped those animal products and tried switching everything to plant foods. That would just... It would be awesome for you, Gabby. It would be awesome for the animals, for the planet. And you're going to lose weight even more, a lot easier. And you don't have to kill it in the gym. Keep your gym up. You know, it looks like you really enjoy it. And that's fantastic. But you don't have to kill yourself in the gym to lose weight and... Keep it off. Keep it off. Effortlessly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all determined by this predominantly. Yep. And I was going to say, since responding to Gabby just over two years ago, mm. What the Health came out oh, uh, yes. on Netflix, which we'll link yes, that down yes, below, yes. just in case Gabby or anyone else hasn't seen it. Yeah. So again, just follow the science from the plant-based doctors and... Life's so much easier. Yeah, and it's not even the plant-based no, doctor's it's science. It's the science. It just so happens that the plant-based doctors are promoting that science. Because the science is saying, eat a whole foods plant-based diet. Yeah. Right? So it's just like, it's so easy. It's so easy. So easy. Yeah. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. Yes. Again, what did you have to eat? We'd love to know, as would others. Like, share and subscribe. And make sure you turn on notifications. Hopefully they actually work for you and you see this video and future videos. That would be great. And mind you, if you find that you're unsubscribed from our channel, if you don't see anything like every week from us, it means that YouTube hates us and they've just let you know about it and they've automatically unsubscribed you. So make sure you come back to the channel. Keep subscribing, please. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and remember until next time, guys, that going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do. See you next video. Bye, guys.